Hi, and welcome to the Google Drive tutorial. This is the first of a four-part series that I'm putting together to help people understand what Google Drive is, how do you get yourself an account, how do you access it, and how do you use it. So we look forward to sharing these four parts with you. I'm sure everybody's heard of Google. You may or may not have heard of Google Drive. You may or may not already use this. Prior to summer of 2012, Google Drive used to be called Google Docs. So you may have heard of that or may even used Google Docs. It's now called Google Drive and is one of the built-in tools uh, uh, as part of the, the Google platform. In order to access Google Drive, you have to have a Google account, and there are two ways that you can get a Google account. You can go to Google and just sign up for an account, and you have a Google account, or you can sign up for a Gmail account or a Google Mail account. That's the page that we have on the screen right here. If you already have a Gmail account, you already have a Google account, so there isn't anything else that you would need to do other than sign in with your username and password. But if you do not have a Google account or a Gmail account, go to www.gmail.com. This particular screen will pull up, and you can go to this red box that says Create an Account. And it'll ask you to fill in a few boxes. You go ahead and do that. You put an, uh, an email address will be created uh, for you uh, with a uh, at gmail.com. Uh, tail end there, and you now have a Google uh, account, a Google Gmail account. So we need to then talk about what is Google Drive and how do we use it. So what exactly is Google Drive? Google Drive is cloud storage, so it's like virtual hard drive space. The beauty of cloud storage is you can access it from anywhere on just about any device. So once you have a Google Drive account set up, you have items in Google Drive that you need to access, you can access them from a smartphone, from a tablet, from a laptop, from a desktop, from anywhere in the world that you have internet access. So it's a great place to put things that you need to get to uh, a lot from a number of different places. You don't have to worry about uh, carrying a bunch of flash drives around that have your documents and other items on there that you periodically need to get access to. So it's cloud storage. With a Google account, Google Drive gives everybody five gigabytes of storage space. That's a lot of storage space, especially if uh, primarily you're going to use it to store documents. If you're going to be putting uh, a bunch of videos and uh, photos and that type of a thing, music, those are the types of files that you can also store here, but that's going to use up more space quicker. If you're a, a heavy-duty user of Google Drive, you do have the ability for a modest fee to buy additional storage space. I think it's something like $5 a month would give you access to 100 gigabytes of storage, so that's something you'll have to decide going forward. But for most people, 5 gigabytes for storing documents is going to be plenty. Uh, some of you may either use or have heard of other cloud storage um, devices and, and apps that are out there. One of the most popular ones uh, is called Dropbox. If you have an iPad or an Android tablet of some sort, uh, you may already have that particular app. That app is also free. That gives you two gigabytes of storage space. So a lot of times uh, I actually use both of those in conjunction. There's certain things I have stored in Dropbox. And, um, and certain things I have stored uh, in Google. So that's just something to think about. Again, uh, any type of document or file you can store in Google Drive. So by that I mean uh, Word documents, Excel documents, PowerPoint, um, video files, audio files, image files, graphics of, of any kind. A lot of different things that you can store there. So now that we have our account and we've, we've opened up um, Gmail, we've opened up Google, take a look at the black toolbar along the top. 
next to just to the right of Gmail, which you're going to find yourself going to a lot, or you already do have this open. You have the Gmail account open if that's how you you get your mail. All we're going to do is click on Drive. And that's going to get us to Google Drive. Now, Google Drive, as I said, used to be called Google Docs. So, uh, if you've used Google Docs before, you're going to find Google Drive is very intuitive. There's a few things that they've changed, but uh, for the most part, it's it's the same layout. Now, this is once you get into Drive. Um, I want us to primarily focus on the left side here. You'll always be able to tell what page you're on. If I were to flip back and forth, if I were to go to Gmail, you'll see that it now says Gmail over here in this area. We'll click back on Drive. So this, this tells you what page you're on and if you need to get another page based on all these items uh, up here. All you would do is just click on them, you get on that page. So again, we're on the Drive page. Let me tell you how I like to, to work. We're going to look primarily at this left side menu. We're going to talk about a couple of things now. And then again, I said I'm going to be putting together four videos. The first video here that you're watching is all about introduction. What is Google? How do you upload uh, files? That type of a thing. And basically, how do you navigate? The second video is going to be document creation. Many people don't know that you can actually create documents. So you can create Word documents right inside Google. You don't even have to have Word on that particular device. Same thing with Excel, same thing with PowerPoint and so forth. So let's take a look at this left menu here. We got this red button called Create. We're going to get into that in our second video. Also, some other things we're going to do when it gets into video three, we're going to use some more of these menu items over here. Video three, I'm going to show you how to share files and folders with uh, other people, both people who have Google accounts and those that don't have Google accounts. And then we're going to talk about a file structure and a file and folder structure for the fourth uh, tutorial video. So we talked about the Create button. We're going to get to that in video two. We're going to talk about the upload button here in a second. That's this little red button over here to the right of create. But I want to talk to you about how to use the particular Google Drive desktop. Uh, I don't like using my drive, which is where we're at here, because I'm a Google Docs user. If you click on this down arrow next to more, you get a few more menu items here. I like using the activity area. The activity area is kind of like a spider web. It lists all of my items here. It alphabetizes them uh, depending on the type of an item that I put together. And I have things in certain spots because I know where they are and, and I want to want to have them there. So we'll talk about file structure and all that in the fourth in the fourth video. But I like to use activity because it kind of gives me the spider web version of everything that's out there. If you're a Google Docs user, this activity area used to be home. So you'd be familiar with it from that perspective. So let's talk about how to upload and add uh, items to your Google Drive. So all you would do is click on this little red arrow here and then you get two choices. You can actually upload an entire folder and you can upload a file. For right now, because we are going to talk about folders in another video, we're just going to do file. So if I click on a file, this is going to open up the documents uh, folder in your, on your particular machine, whatever device you're using in order to get uh, what you need to, to find and access. Let's see, what do I want to put in here? Uh, let's see. Now here's a time value of money video. Let's put that in there. So let's talk about settings. Um, normally, it comes like this. You have some choices here, and none of the boxes are checked. Because there's certain times that I want some of these settings to apply, and sometimes I don't necessarily need them to apply, I always put the check in this box. This is how uh, I have it defaulted. So confirm settings before each upload. And then we'll talk about the reason why here in a second. Let's take a look at the top two. The top one says convert documents, presentations, spreadsheets, and drawings to the corresponding Google Docs format. You're going to want to have this checked 
probably all the time. There might be certain situations where you don't want to. But if you, one of the, the beauty pieces of, of using Google Drive is that you can actually have documents that you can share with other people. And these documents can be editable. So if you and I and two or three other people are working on something and we're all, maybe we're doing it from a distance so we can't always get in the room and work together, we have the ability to each go into our Google Drive account where a particular file has been shared, maybe it's a document, and we all need to work on it. And we can, all, we can even all work on it, or a few of us work on it at the same time, and we'll talk about that uh, in another video. But you have the ability to all work on it together. So converting documents to the Google Docs format, they're not going to be able to open it up and do anything with it unless you convert it to the Google Docs format. So keep that checked all the time. The second item here, convert text from PDF and image files to Google Documents. Uh, I don't usually do that, um, primarily because if it does try to convert, oftentimes you have some issues with uh, some of the images and all that. It's, it's not a good idea to do with image files and PDFs. Uh, formatting just kind of gets a little crazy, so I don't bother doing that. So those are the, the, the two settings I always click the top one. I do not click the second one. And that's the reason why I like to have confirmed settings before each upload. It just allows me to do a double check. And I'll do start upload and you can see that it's going to be doing its thing right here. This is a video file. It's going to take a little longer. You can see the percentage here. I'm not going to go all the way through uploading this and have you sit and watch. It's going to be a little boring for you. But I did want to show you those are the settings that we just looked at. When this gets completely done, this cancel button over here is going to turn into, let me do something different. Just to show you because it will be a little faster. Let's find something else. Uh, let's do a Word document just because that will load faster. Again, we have our items clicked. Start upload. And as you can see, this is a lot faster. And what I wanted to take that other one out and show you this, a video is going to take a little bit longer to load, is you have this share item over here. This gives you the ability and uh, ways that you're going to share this particular document. It creates an automatic uh, link. You can, it's already highlighted. You can just copy and paste this link. You can give it to somebody. You can mark this as private. You can email um, other people or other groups. And that would be allow, uh, how you're allowed to share that document. You can keep it uh, just in this default way, and you can always go back and change the share privileges later, and we'll show you that in another video. So there you are. This is getting started using Google Drive and uploading documents. The second tutorial will be on how to use Google Drive to actually create documents.